Hi guys, I hope you're well. If you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Blakemore and I'm a teacher here in Dubai. For the past seven weeks or so, I've been going through an online distance learning platform due to school closure. Recently, I've introduced a Bitmoji virtual classroom to make things a little bit more exciting and visual for the children. Things can get quite repetitive, sometimes due to me just sitting in front of the class explaining different activities. So it's been quite good to introduce this Bitmoji style activity for it to be something a little bit more visual and interactive. In this video, I wanted to share how you can set something similar up, but also some of the different interactive elements that you can put within this platform. So we're gonna jump straight into the reasons why you might want a, a platform like this. And firstly, if you don't have something like Google Classroom or Seesaw set up, then having something like this virtual classroom is a great way to share different activities that the children need to do each day. In addition to that, if you have Google Classrooms or Seesaw, it can be a really nice way to bring certain elements from within, from within that platform together just to make things a little bit more visual and accessible for the children. So let's jump into how you would create a Bitmoji virtual classroom through Google Slides. So what I thought we'd do to start off with is show my own virtual classroom before then showing you how to set up your own Bitmoji virtual classroom too. So to start off with, we're in Google Drive. Now, the reason we're in Google Drive is because there's a range of things that you can do from here. Now, this corner up here is the new section and to create our virtual Google Classroom for our Bitmojis, uh, we're going to use Google Slides. In addition, this tab here, if we two click or right click, and scroll down to make a copy, that makes a copy of the virtual classroom. Now, the reason you'll want to do that, if you choose to, is so that you have a couple of versions and you can make adjustments without altering any of the links that you have on your original. Now, you can take a screenshot, but you will lose the links if you screenshot your virtual classroom and you'll see the different links that I've got set up in my virtual classroom in a second. You could download it as a PDF, but if you embed any videos into that file, then you won't be able to see those videos, but you will still be able to see some of the links. Now, to start off with, the reason you can see me and the things that I'm doing on my screen at the moment is because I'm using Screencastify. It's a really good little piece of uh, virtual software that I'm using at the moment so that you can send screencasts to your children with your face in. So there we go. It's for free at the moment. It's something that I've downloaded for free. I'm not affiliated, but something that I've found useful. So let's step into my virtual classroom and see what I've got set up. So there's lots of different things going on with the different links. First things first, you'll see the reading record. That was the main reason why I wanted to set up this virtual classroom is so that the children can see each other read so that I could hear other children read and so that we have some, some sort of way of documenting all the different reading that the children are doing. Out there, that's just a plant pot. That's my Bitmoji. I can move that around and have different Bitmojis, which I'm going to show you in a second. This is a epic reading. It's a range of different books that the children can access. This is Roald Dahl, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory because that's our topic at the moment. So it's just a PDF that I've uploaded so that the children can access that. And then from there, this is the morning challenge that the children have been doing for the last seven weeks now. And they've still continued to love it. So I've just been uploading that each morning and they continue doing that each, each morning. So that's there. From there, this is the morning message. This was another key reason why I've done this is because usually for the morning message, they click and they see a face similar to that. Now, that's okay, but I mean, I'd personally prefer to see something along these lines than whatever thumbnail Google decides to throw up for my video. This up here, I'm not gonna click on it, but this is usually a link to all the different wellbeing meeting times that we have through Google Meets. This here is just a few optional extras, essentially, for some of the different websites that they can go onto to practice their targets. Now. This is something that's quite straightforward to set up. I'm gonna show you how to create this now, but to save you time, I've uploaded this version as a bit of a template as a PDF. And I've also uploaded the one that I'm about to create onto the descriptions too. That rather than, I've seen a few on Teachers Pay Teachers and it's, it's charged, I don't believe in that at these current times. So I've uploaded it for free. One thing that I'd ask you to do really be appreciated is like and subscribe and things like that if you have the time to go down to a food bank and donate some food to a, a local food bank rather than pay for resources that would also be appreciated for me and goes to a good cause i know some families might be struggling at the moment so that'd be appreciated so let's jump on to how to create the bitmoji virtual classroom so now we're on a new google slide so there's lots of things that we can do from here to create our own 
virtual classroom. So to start off with, we're deleting these boxes and you're going to call it virtual classroom. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to call it virtual classroom two. So then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to insert a background. So go to slide, change background. You're going to choose an image. Now you can either upload one of the PDFs that I put in my description just to save some time, or you can go on to Google image search and search for wall and floor. And then from there, you've got a range of different options to make it look a bit neater. We'll go for something a bit different this time. Let's upload that. Done. So now we've got the, the fun bit. For those of you who enjoy playing The Sims, this is a bit like a rubbish version of The Sims, basically. So we're going to go to Insert, Image, Search from Web. Now, you have to have a little bit of a, an explore with this one because sometimes typing in transparent means it doesn't have a background, but sometimes that limits your options. So I'm just going to search whiteboard at the moment and see what comes up. And you can see here, if I put this one on, that's not too bad. It's a bit, might just have the old one on there just because I know it works. Let's just save that one. So then from here, there's lots of other things you can start to do. If we type in plant transparent, the plants that start to show up, let's put that on there. Float in, bring it down onto the floor, make it a bit smaller. Sofa, we'll put this one on. Now, if you don't actually like the color, you can colorize it to a degree. To do that, you're going to go onto this, Format Options, Recolor, and you can change it a little bit. So oh, let's just have a, a gray one there. So you can see I've changed the color just by going into Recolor. Uh, I could have all sorts of go for a real neon, but we'll just leave it as it is as gray so you can change the color of them. Doesn't matter too much, but for those of you who are quite artistic and like the different colors, it's there. If I wanted this a bit further over the other way, what I can do is go onto here. If I type, go on to rotate, flip horizontally, then I can bring this into this corner over here. Move that there. Now, you can see that we're in front of the plant at the moment, which I'm not too keen on. To send it backwards, we're going to go onto order, send backwards. If we wanted to add some motivational posters or something along those lines, then what we'll do is go onto Google, find something that looks a little bit like this, move myself over, screenshot it, and then we'll bring it in there. So then from here, what we'll do is just add a bit of a border so then it looks like a photo on the wall. And to do that, we'll go onto the border, white, and you can change the size on the side here. So then we've got a few things going on. Now, what we're going to look at is adding hyperlinks into the following bit. We'll look at adding in a book so that you can start to embed those yourselves. Now, we're going to actually add in a YouTube clip uh, of someone reading a book, and then we will put that into here. So to start off with, we'll find the cover that we want. I like the book Giraffes Can't Dance. So now we're back to the classroom. You can see I've done a few bits and pieces, but a bit of a change around so that this is a, a bit more aesthetically pleasing. So now I've added in this as a screenshot. So we're going to show you how to hyperlink. So you're going to click on the image to start off with, and then you're going to click insert link. Now, you can either have a link from something in your Google Drives, so that's where I linked in a PDF, or you can have it to a website. Now, that links in really well so that you can upload uh, games and things like you saw on mine. Just simply copy or double click to go onto that copy. And then from there, you're going to paste it in, apply as so. So then the children are going to click onto that. Now, if you're struggling with sizing, obviously you can drag and drop that. If you need to crop it for any reason, you're going to go onto this and double click crop image and then you can just change the size of that as and when you need to. I'm not going to mess with it too much, though. Then just make sure it's sat nicely on the box. There we go. It's a bit more pleasing there. Now we're also going to look at making this whiteboard a little bit more interesting. So we're going to insert text to start off with, a bit like what I did before. Uh, so we can just type in, good morning. And then we're going to highlight it and we'll insert a link. Right-clicked on it, we'll double tap, insert link, and 
whatever message or thing you have from either Google Drive or slides in this presentation, I'm going to insert a link to one of my videos that I've uploaded for the class. I'm not going to do that though. Now, if we want to add in a video, sorry, then we're going to go into insert video. We can either upload that one or I could perhaps put my own in, search for that one. That's my own. I'm going to select that. You could either upload it from the Google Drive. So you've got a range of different <laughs> recordings that I've made there. Um, URL for YouTube. So let's just go for the one that I had in before. It's a video that I quite like about the dogs in Thailand. And then that will upload there in the corner. So now we're going to look at how to download our Bitmoji teacher person. So to start off with, we're going to go to here. And if you haven't already got a Bitmoji account, then create one and you can then start to create your own uh, little people and things like that and design in your outfits again, a bit like The Sims. Now, what we need is to have something like this in the corner. Now, you probably won't have that. So to do that, we need to type in Bitmoji Chrome add-on or extension. And then we'll click on here. Now, mine says remove from Chrome, but yours will say something along the lines of add to Chrome. From there, once we've done that, then you'll have a little add-on there and you'll need to sign in. Then when we go back to the virtual classroom, we click on that. And as you can see, there's a range of different people. Uh, my Bitmoji doing a range of different things. So I could have him with a beanbag, like we saw in the last one. If I put sitting, you can see he's sat down here. Let's just bring him up to here. Doesn't look too bad, move him over. And there we go, brought him in. You could maybe have a bit of a, a speech bubble or something along those lines of him saying something. Uh, again, it'll just take some moving around, can change the position, flip him around. We could then also have him as a bit of a link to something. So whether that's a link to a, a register or whether it's a link to a piece of work. Again, with this, you could have different pieces of text. A nice idea with the whiteboard would be to have your schedule or calendar set out. You could have a different box to the side where you have your register or something along those lines or schedule and have each lesson linked with specific uh, links set in with them. As you can imagine, there are so many different things you can do. Uh, as I showed you before, there was a PDF of our class book that was downloaded and the children can access that. You might then want to add in a picture of a laptop or something along those lines. Get the idea that I could perhaps have a game up in that corner just typed out and the children could click on the, the link to the game or have that as a link to some sort of game. And there's the options are pretty, pretty limitless. Now, from here, what we need to do is either share it with the children. If the children have Google Classroom, then that's really straightforward. I'll show you that in a second. Or if you have Seesaw, then you'll need to download it as a PDF. So to do that, we're going to click on File, and then we're going to go on to Download. Now, when we download, there's a range of different options. We're going to press Download as a PDF, and you'll see it just come down in the corner here, and that way you can upload it to Seesaw, which makes it really straightforward. All the different links, that link there, for example, would still be set. And we got rid of the link on Good Morning, but we'd still have different links set up. If we did have a video embedded, that would get lost. So just bear that in mind. Now, we did mention about screenshots. As you can imagine, if we screenshot this now, we'll lose the link there. But then we'd also find it very difficult to move people around. So just have a think about what the way that you want things to work. Now we're going to look at how to upload that to Google Classroom. So this is the Google Classroom that I've set up especially for this video. So you'll be able to see that the children would be able to access this by adding in the class code on their Google Classrooms and things like that. So from here, what we're going to do is upload the virtual classroom that we've created. So to start off with, we can do it through the stream so that the children can see it straight away. I prefer to use the stream for the children so that they can write comments, uh, questions, so that it's something I see straight away. So if I posted uh, the virtual classroom there, it would get quite clogged up. So it's better to have it here. You can imagine that I would have 
uh, morning messages, but also English, maths, science, those sorts of things. Just get the children into the routine of clicking onto the morning messages straight away. Create rather than set it as an assignment because they don't actually have to complete anything. I'm just going to post it as material. I'm going to put May morning message, accidental alliteration, but the month we're doing this in is May. So we'll put that there. Uh, we'll just say access the virtual classroom. From there, we're going to add to Google Drive. And then we'll just add in the virtual two. And we can either schedule that for the morning if you're doing it the night before. Make sure that you click the topic, so morning messages. And we're just going to post it now for the purpose of this recording. So then when the children come to it, we're going to go to May morning message and they can click on it there. And they'll be able to see all the different messages, but they'll also be able to click on the different hyperlinks and access those there. You can imagine the text is your morning message, for example. Uh, one of the advantages of doing it through Google Classrooms is that each morning, I change the morning message and I haven't got to start recreating things and downloading PDFs and things like that. So that's one of the reasons I prefer having this Google Classroom system for the virtual Bitmoji Classroom. So that marks the end of the video. Please let me know if you have any questions so that I can answer them down in the comments. If there's anything else that you'd like to add to this video, any other tips and things that you know of having done a virtual classroom before, then feel free to add them into the comments too. As I said at the start, I'm not going to charge for any of the PDFs that I've put within the description for you to download. But if you do like and subscribe, that's free and it's always appreciated. If you have the time, one of the things I prefer rather than paying for something on Teachers Pay Teachers, if you have the time to go and donate something to a local food bank for those families that might be struggling during this time, then that would also be really appreciated for me too. I hope you found this video useful in some way and hopefully I see you in the next one. But for now, I'm out.